everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another live stream and welcome to everybody that's here, it is really really lovely to see you all here and uh, by the way if you're wanting shout outs as I've seen a lot of people are already, just hang in there and I will try to get to you, if I seem to be missing you constantly that isn't intentional so keep trying and hopefully I will get to you. But for now, welcome everybody, welcome to another live stream. As you can probably tell from the title, today's uh, video slash stream is going to be a live review. It's been, well, I don't know how long, well, before Christmas anyway, since I last did a live review. And I've never done a live review of a train pack before, so I'm really excited for that. And so that's what's going to be coming up today. We've also got lots of requests to do, lots of engines to run. And so I hope it's going to be a really good uh, session and, uh, as I say, lots and lots of things to see. So Amory Junction's here, he says, hi also, it was Gareth Waite. Welcome to you. You've just uh, signed up and become a new member. So welcome to you. I hope you enjoy the membership. Uh, Kate K. Lewis says, uh, sorry, she's late. Well, that's all right. Don't be sorry. Uh, you're not really that late, to be fair. Uh, Gareth Waite again. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. He says, hey, Sam, uh, good to be here again. Could we have the Barclays and the Grey P class pulling, uh, sorry, pulling food and drink wagons? Can't wait till Wednesday. I'm up to Hatton's to, um, oh, right. Okay. Uh, great Terrier review and I'm now a member too. Wow, well thank you so much. I uh, hope you have a nice trip at Hatton's and uh, yes, so uh, if you're there, try not to get too tempted by the uh, P-classes and the uh, Barclays and things because they are wonderful things. Howdy from Indiana says Jason uh, Jansen Hobbs. Well, howdy to you too. I don't think I've, uh, well, nobody's ever told me that they watch from Indiana before so that's, uh, that's a first possibly. Uh, remember me Sam says Sam Nielsen. Yes, I do. Uh, let's see, blimey, the chat is going fast today. Let's see, whoever wants a shout out, let me know. Toby Cohen, there we go, shout out please. SG Kingley uh, says, how are you? Well, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? Can we have Thomas shunting a breakdown train? That's a good idea. Have I ever gotten Thomas to shunt a breakdown train before? I'm not absolutely sure about that. Uh, you should get a Backman 282 Mikado class. Oh, that does sound nice. That sounds pretty large. Um, but uh, yeah, that sounds good to me. I'll try that. Hi, 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 says Toby. There we go. You must have heard his shout out there. I have a class 47, uh, says uh, Fujiwara Tuj. Well, that's cool. I hope I said your name right. That's the main thing. How's your day been, Sam? Says Deku NZ, uh, NZC. Uh, well, it's been fine, thank you. Not too bad at all. It's uh, always fun when stream days come along because you know how much I love these things. Anyone from Michigan, says Warren. Uh, well, not me, but uh, maybe there are, maybe there are. The Ben and Chloe channel, please, says shout out. Can I please have a shout out? Love your vids also, says Rehan Afzal. Hope I said your name right. Again, these uh, names are getting trickier every week. <laughs> Olympus593, hello. Um, good thanks, mate, says SG Kingley. That's good to hear. Get a big boy, says Angela. Yes, loads of people ask me to get a big boy. I perhaps ought to one day. Alan Toft says shout out. Um, yes, I made it, says Chris11. Yes, you did. Welcome to you. Uh, I'm very good, thank you, uh, Rehan. What's your favourite diesel engine, Amory Junction? I guess I like the Class 20, but uh, mm, that's tricky. I'll have to look at all the diesels and decide, I think. Uh, a up, uh, light lamp productions, A up to you. Knapford Works says shout out, so there you go. I've also got some shout outs I've uh, already promised as well. So, uh, ridiculous inflatable swan thing, how about that for a uh, username? I wasn't just insulting everybody, that genuinely is the username. Uh, so, he asked for a shout out. Gabe's Tornado Sh Siren Show, another crazy nickname, uh, but he asked for one. Anonymous Spaceman, James Shelton also asked for a shout out. Will Wharton, and I'm told that it's Sam Hussey's 14th birthday tomorrow, I think it is. I don't think Sam knows he's getting this shout out but uh, someone in his family asked me to do that so happy birthday for tomorrow Sam and of course if you get some goodies model railways related uh, do let us know what they are because uh, I'm sure a lot of people on here would love to hear steam fanatic says moth okay well if there's a moth um, there's not a lot I can do but uh, try and spot it or something or just leave it be you know moths are all right overall a up says a up <laughs> don't think I've seen that before that's pretty cool um, Yeet says Knapford Works. Do your intro, Sam says Mike J. I agree. Oh, you've missed that. I already did the intro. Shout out says Holden uh, Timulty. There you go. There's a shout out to you. Uh, who's your favourite YouTuber says Liam Jackson. Oh, that's tricky. Mm, I'll have to think about that. Remind me later on and I'll have a proper think. There's so many, so many good ones. Uh, BA Films shout out. Shout out please says Bennett Stevens. Um, can I get a shout out? Says stop motion and more. Well, thank you all for those. Uh, it's lovely to see you all here, as I say. And uh, if you didn't get a shout out then and you're desperate, uh, keep trying later on and uh, I'll try and get to you later on. Okay, so what I wanted to start with, I wanted to start with a massive, massive thank you to everybody that donated via Super Chat last week. Now, I've got the whole list here. It is quite extensive, but uh, I'll try and get through it as quick as possible. But massive, massive thanks to all of these folks. 
So here we go. We have Lewis Hughes, Lego Master 365, Charles Curtis, Jack Clark, The Ugly Duck Man, William Town, Paul Sternitsky, Danny Scott, Steam Traction Spotter, who by the way sent in a massive donation, so thank you so much for that. Milo McQuillan, ACB, Mark Matthews, JB Dolan Studios, Sideways, West Hill Wagon Works, Train Fan 28, Colin Wikes, Simon Hayward, AZ Rail, Ollie Turf 26, Jason Biggs, Gareth Waite, and Sparky 107 107. So a massive thank you to all of you guys. That wasn't so bad. I got through that okay. Of course, all of you guys guys are entered into the competition to win either the uh, gorgeous Hornby Great Western Shunters truck or of course uh, Brazing, the b latest Bullman model and of course, no not Brazing, Brisket, ah got it wrong again and of course Brisket gets his own certificate as well so you get that too. Of course if you did send a super chat last week the slate is now wiped, I mean your, your entries still count but you can now freely enter again this week so if you'd like to do that absolutely uh, welcome to. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, the Super Chat is the little dollar sign down there. It basically allows you to send in small amounts of money to support the channel. And obviously, if you do that, you get entered for these various competitions with just a little way of saying thank you. Obviously, as I said last week, nobody's got to donate or anything like that. You're welcome to just come in here uh, and just watch absolutely free. That's absolutely fine. But for those who just want to do a little bit more and support the channel and uh, see it uh, continue, that's uh, a way you can do that. And a massive thank you in advance for that. Mm. And also, if you want to have a request, you can do that via the Super Chat as well. So those that send in £5 or $5 or €5 Euros or more, uh, you can pick any loco in my collection and I will uh, show that running for you, uh, well, as part of a uh, thank you really for the Super Chat, so we could do that. And in fact, I've got some of those to do straight away before we get on to the unboxing, so here we go. So, as you can see, these are a few left over from last week, which I thought I would do straight away, as promised. So on the outside line there, oh, blind the way... What did I say there? By the way, Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I didn't see... Uh, oh, you should get a standard four tank engine. Yes, I should. In fact, I do. I think I have one. I just uh, yet to review it. But uh, yeah, I will do that. Oh, and Paul. Paul S. Thank you. So oh, wow. Thank you very much, Paul. Let me see if I can find your message. Can you double head two Q1s with the new Southern Coaches? Ah, now that's an idea I like. Thank you very much for that, Paul. And yes, I can certainly do that. Okay, so on the outside line, as you can see, quite an interesting request, this one. So this one was from JB Dolan Studios, and he wanted to see Percy Duck and Thomas, so that's a triple header, it's not very often I get asked to do those, um, with uh, some cream and red coaches, which I took to mean blood and custards. So yes, I can definitely do that for you. Then on the middle line was a request from Sideways, who wanted to see the Class 66, specifically in the Freightliner livery, with some Inti City Swallow coaches, and... Uh, those are just here. But then when I told him that I've only got two Swallow coaches, he decided he wanted to add some regular intercity coaches as well. And a little bit further back here, I've got those set up. So I hope that's all right for you sideways. And then Jack Clark on the inside line here wanted to see a Deltic leading with a Class 50. So it's a double header there with some BR Blue coaches. Now, the only problem is I haven't actually got any BR Blue coaches. Uh, so I've gone with one of the only sets of Blue coaches I've got, which is the Coronation Scott coaches. So I do apologize for that, but uh, you asked for Blue coaches. Coaches, so I've sort of done that. So here we go then. Let's get, uh, let's see here. Duck, Thomas and Percy all running together. So that's very cool. That's a, a great idea that. Never done that before. The Class 66 with the Intercity coaches. Again, don't think I've done that either. And then we have the Class 50 and uh, the Deltic together. Both Lima models though, so those are a little bit noisy, but I'm hoping they will be okay. So let's have a minute or two watching these run. And uh, once again, a massive thank you for those requests. Uh, I do love these. And a couple of diesels as well. I, I can't remember. Oh yeah, we did. We did have a diesel last week, but I think it was only one or two, wasn't there? Uh, certainly not a, a huge amount of diesel, so it's nice to be seeing a few of those. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's all happening behind the bookcase here. So let's take a look for the uh, Thomas and Friends triple header, shall we? I think that's the uh, the most interest. Well, not most interesting, but the most intriguing one, uh, because that's the one that's most likely to have an accident, I reckon. Because duck triple headers are a little bit dangerous, as you might know. So let's wait for them to come in here. Here they come now. Oh yes. Well, they seem to be happy enough, don't they? I can't see any problems with that so far. I finally get to see everything, says Gamer Kid is cool. Well, that's good to hear. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thank you very much, Duckman. He says, can we get the Golden Valley 060 with four red wheel, wheel coaches and a couple of vans, please, Sam? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. And yes, you absolutely can. Okay, there we have the Lima double header, which looks very, very cool. Let's follow that for a bit, shall we? Let's see how that gets on on the other side. There we go, there's Duckman. <laughs> I was wondering where that got to. So there you go, you got your little uh, screen time there. 
Oh yes, there we have it. We've got uh, Thomas and friends there. Blimey, that is uh, quite the triple header, isn't it? That. <laughs> please run the run the BR Blue Canadian Pacific, please. Ah yes, that's one of the most requested locos in my streams. That one gets asked for all the time. Do you have the Thomas and Friends Flying Scotsman? No, I don't. Those are quite uh, rare as well. Uh, I wish I did, but uh, no, unfortunately, those are very expensive, and I don't think I could uh, afford that. Uh, Crow Farmer YouTube says, I wish I could donate. Well, that's absolutely fine. You don't feel that you have to donate at all. Uh, just thank you very much for being here and uh, giving your support watching. That's really, that's really all that matters. And Neil Golding says he loves the Class 50. Well, me too. It's a cool model. That, In fact, I've never reviewed that one. I don't know why, really. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent little model, really, to say how old it is. It's certainly not bad. Right, I'm going to bring these requests to a stop then. And then I think we'll get on to the, uh, the next order of business, which is, of course, the review. So there's the Thomas & Friends triple header just coming in now. I'll wait till it's up around the front and we'll get it stopped. I know you're seeing a slightly different camera angle now, but I've had to move one of the cameras uh, sneakily. I don't expect anybody noticed, or maybe you did, uh, so that we can do the unboxing in just a second. So there we go. Thank you very, very much uh, to those guys for the requests. And we've had a few more coming already, so I'll be getting to those as soon as possible. Sparky107107, he says, how is your track fastened down and it stays together? Uh, being on a carpet floor. Uh, well, in some places it is hot glued down, um, in other places it's not stuck down at all, it just sort of stays in place. And I do sometimes go around with a pair of uh, pliers just tightening up the fish plates and things, and it's been down for five or six years now, and uh, it is absolutely fine. Well, it, it is as far as I know. And it keeps working, so I guess there's no problem. And oh, Uni Kit Cat, thank you so much for that. Yes, you can have a very big shout out. And thank you, Uni Kit Cat, that's very kind of you. There we go, it's popped up on the screen, perfect. Okay, so shall we do this then? Shall we take a look at today's review slash unboxing slash train pack? I can't believe this, a train pack. I can't believe I've never done it on stream before, that's crazy. Right. Are you ready then? I mean, it's not going to be a massive reveal or anything because I've showed this before, obviously, on the uh, on the thumbnail. But it is this, the Hornby Railroad Great Western Freight Pack. Uh, something I haven't said anything about yet is how much I paid for this. So this is something I bought from the Hatton Sale of the Century just before Christmas. Now, you're never going to guess how much this cost. I don't see anybody uh, trying to guess, but uh, yeah, you won't believe this. So bearing in mind that an 040 loco on its own is normally, what, 20 quid? Um, perhaps, uh, yeah, more or less 20 quid. I got this for 29 so not only have we got an engine here, we have uh, three other items of rolling stock, which is pretty crazy. Uh, now, as far as I know, Hattons have run out of stock of, with these now because they were so inexpensive, but there are quite a lot of these Hornby train packs around, so if you want to get something similar to this for a similar bargain price, uh, do look it up and you might be able to pick yourself one up. So for the time being then, let's head down onto the carpet where I always do my reviews. As you can see, <laughs> I've set up a camera there and we will get this thing out. All right, let's get into position then. Are you all ready for this? So this has to be one of the, well, this is definitely the cheapest train pack I think I've ever unboxed on camera before. Very, very cheap, less than 30 quid this cost me. So let's take a quick look. So on the end of the box, you're not really gonna be able to see this too well, but this is our 3489. It's a railroad Great Western freight train pack. And that's uh, more or less all the box tells us about this. So I've never had this out, by the way. This has been in its box ever since I bought it before Christmas. So I've been just as desperate as I'm sure some of you guys are to see what's inside. So, I mean, obviously we can see what's inside because uh, the front of the box is see-through. I mean, that, that spoils the surprise slightly, but uh, yeah, it's not a massive shock, I'm sure, but uh, I've not had it out, that's the point. Okay, so, oh, okay, we've got cardboard on the back of here. That's weird. Look, what's going on there? That's interesting. I mean, it's probably not interesting. Yeah, it's just got, like, cardboard on the back. Okay. Well, I said it's interesting. It's really not, is it? But, yeah, I wasn't expecting to see that. Okay, so we have the uh, Locomotive Operation and Maintenance booklet here. Oh, thank you very much, whoever that was. I will come and see in just a second. I can't see the screen right now. Uh, but thank you, thank you. I will definitely uh, read what you put later on. Uh, thank you for that. Okay, so inside, oh, it's quite detailed. And I think this is just for all of the Hornby 040s, as you can see. Uh, so let's see, to gain access to the motor. Yeah, I think it's more or less just showing you how to uh, dismantle the loco. Shows you a bit about how to fit a new motor, although we've done experiments on that on this channel. And we found that, uh, well, together we found that uh, these can go for 350 miles and still be absolutely fine so 
Whether or not you'll ever need a new motor, I'm not too sure. I would imagine the, uh, the worm drives are going to wear out way before the motors do. But uh, yeah, either way, let's take a look then. Let's find out how this is fastened down. It looks like it's just sellotape down. So I will try and overcome that with my fingers. I'm going to pull the pieces of sellotape off so that they don't just stick right back onto the packaging. Because uh, it does that sometimes and you get into a bit of a, a sellotape paradox where things just keep getting stuck. Okay, so that's three of them off. I should be able to lift this up now. So, right, what do you reckon? Shall we go for... Well, I think we better go for the Loco first, haven't we? We always do. So I believe this is a Holden Class 101 Great Western Tank Engine, and it is just a basic 040, and I've got a couple of these already, as you're going to find out later on. Um, but looking at it, it does look like a lovely little thing, doesn't it? I'm going to give you a much closer look at this in a little while, and we will take a look at this together and find out what the detail is like on this. But yeah, that is a lovely little... Uh, 040 tank isn't it and uh, for the price you know 29 quid plus rolling stock you get the whole train for that that can't be bad can it and yes it's lovely in that uh, early great western livery that's great okay so shall we go with the box wan van <laughs> i nearly said wagon there but uh, yeah it came out as wan okay so yeah as you can see that's a great western uh, box van I noticed that this has got plastic wheels, which is a little bit of a shame. I suppose that's what you get with the railroad stuff, really, isn't it? Uh, so no metal wheels, which is a bit of a shame, but that's not too bad. And we don't have NEM couplings on this either. As you can see, we've just got the sort of DAPL style couplings, which are removable. There we go, if I show you that. But as you can see, there's no NEM pocket on that. That's just a, a sort of a clip which you just clip into there. But it does work very well, and if you like those wider couplings, it's okay. And I think they do a slimmer version of this coupling as well, so you can change them if you really want, but generally I, I don't tend to. Uh, let's have a look at this wagon then. It says Broad Oak. Oh, we've got another. <laughs> that was a creepy laugh. That one always frightens me. Um, thank you, whoever that was. Again, I can't read the screen right now, so I will make a point of uh, getting to those in just a second. But thank you very much, uh, whatever that was. I appreciate that. So, oh, and another one. <laughs> They're all coming while I can't see the screen. So, it looks similar. This is lovely, by the way. I love the uh, the red on this one. I do like a good red wagon, me. Uh, so, Broad Oak, again, it's the same situation with the... Uh, plastic wheels on metal axles but these couplings are part of the molding they are literally just a part of the wagon so well you might be able to swap the couplings on this one it looks like those are just fixed on uh, so that's you know it's a bit of a shame but again it's a railroad model it's not you know it's not really designed to be super duper modern and uh, you know to be used on super duper layouts or whatnot although of course you could so that's that and then finally i think i've saved the best piece of rolling stock until last because this i would go as far as to say is hardly even a railroad model so it's a toad it is let's see gloucestershire or gloucester even uh, absolutely love this in the great western gray as you can see and um, you probably can't tell right now but there's an awful lot of detail on this especially for the price i think i've paid 10 quid for one of these before and uh, that was part of the railways range. That wasn't even a railroad one. Uh, I think the one I paid 10 quid for had uh, metal wheels, and this one does definitely have plastic wheels. But apart from that, that is not bad value, is it? And also, I've noticed a very, very cool feature here. Oh, Bullman, thank you very much. I will definitely come and take a look at those in just a second. Uh, but thank you, whoever that was. I've noticed that also, and you don't get this, by the way, with the full Hornby Railways stuff, you get uh, Bill and Ben, so you probably can't see this too well but you've got the crew for the loco so you can actually fit those into the cab of the loco if you wanted to which is great and then of course you've got the vacuum pipes which you can fit to the front and back of the loco if you wanted to so that is really really cool i mean what a train pack for less than 30 quid um normally i wouldn't buy sort of railroad stuff well actually i do don't i i do buy quite a bit of railroad stuff but uh, you know for 50 60 quid or whatever I, that wouldn't have appealed to me but for less than 30 I just thought that was absolutely insane. So there we go. Can you see that? What a nice little train pack. Let me know what you think to that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this uh, packaging out of the way. I'm going to uh, just have a quick look and see who those uh, super chatties were from. Uh, so let me just have a little look. And then what we'll do is I'll give you a little bit of history on the Holden 101 tank engines, because again, I've never talked about those before. And then after that, we'll take a nice close look. If you remember, I've got a, a close-up lens set up for the live stuff now, so I can actually show you it up close, which is really nice. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second, but I will just take a quick look and see who just donated. 
right, here we go. So it's Charles Curtis, he says, Hello, Sam, thank you for another great live stream. Well, oh, thank you, Charles. That's very, very kind of you. And my pleasure. I love doing these uh, very, very much. Jason Briggs also, thank you very much for that. Uh, you guys are all entered for the prizes, the Shunter's Truck and, of course, Brisket. Or uh, he's going to end up being called Brazing, isn't he? Because uh, I keep calling him that for some reason. And finally, Jake Darlin, he says, It's been a long time since I made it to one of these. If you're planning on running any locos today, could you run the Railroad Hall, since you made me buy one, with some great Western coaches? Well, first of all, I'm glad I made you buy one, because they are good models. Come on, you'll have to admit that. And yes, I can certainly do that. I've got quite a few requests building up now, but we've got plenty of time for that. So thank you, Jake, and yes, we will do that. Okay, so I'm going to get set up with uh, some close-ups for you, and in the, uh, in the meantime, here's a little bit of info on the Holden 101. So, ironically enough, even though Hornby have produced dozens and dozens of different 040s using this exact design, in real life there was only ever one. So, in real life it was known as the GWR 101 class, and as I say, it was made up of only one experimental tank engine that was built to the design of James Holden in 1901. Now, the Hornby models do resemble the real-life Class 101, although only in quite a loose way. It doesn't so it's not a sort of a, a super accurate model, as I'm sure you can probably imagine. Now, in real life, it was initially built as an oil-fired locomotive in order to experiment as to whether oil firing was economically viable or not. But having proved not, having proved otherwise, it was soon rebuilt into a much more conventional steam locomotive, coal-fired, of course, and it was then used as a shunter. But not for very long, because very sadly the real thing was withdrawn and scrapped in 1911, having only existed for 10 years, so that's a really, really short working life for that thing, of course. Now, Hornby first introduced their Holden 101 class over 40 years ago, in the 1970s it was, and since then it's appeared in a huge number of different liv liveries with different variants and things, including Great Western Green, as we've got here, but also Southern Green, LSWR Brown, and a number of other industrial liveries, and it even stands in as the Santa's Express engine for Hornby's Christmas train sets. All oh, right, very cool. So what do you reckon to that then? Do you like that little train pack? Uh, to be honest, for the money, it can't be bad, can it? Uh, got to go, sorry, Sam, says Ben's Hubcaps. Well, that's all right. I hope you enjoyed what you stayed for. And of course, you can watch back later if you fancy it. Stubwood says, nice. Emery Junction says, cool. George Davis, hi, Sam. Well, hi to you too, George. Welcome. It's been a while since I've seen you here. Uh, Bennett Stevens says, yep, he thinks that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. I saw someone... Mod, a Hornby 101 with the correct valve gear and everything. Wow, that, what, just using the uh, this little 040? That's very cool, Jake. I'd love to see that. Uh, if there's a video, send me an email with the link and I'll definitely take a look. Uh, please do Thomas Stubbleheading with Book Law. That's a good idea. I like that one. Who said that? Piggy Nice 18. I'll have to try that one day. Uh, Javenbird22 says, hey. And uh, yes, Fujiwara, the train pack is pretty decent. I agree. Okay, so are you ready then? Let's have a little bit of a close-up on this if we can. Let's move this so that it's actually in focus. Can we get this? Hmm. What do you reckon? That looks a little bit dodgy, doesn't it? Let's see if we can't uh, focus it in a bit. There we go. So as you whoa, there we go. So <laughs> as you can see, it's it is quite a basic model. I think you would agree, and it's probably supposed to be, isn't it, for the money? However, there's quite a bit of printing going on. You've got the Great Western, of course, with the little Great Western logo. You've got the running number. The handrails here are just uh, a part of the moulding, but they're painted, which is quite nice. And I'm seeing this for the first time too, by the way. Uh, we've also got these handrails, by the way, which are separately painted too. Uh, the top of the chimney appears to be so separately painted. I don't think that one's going to be metal. I could try. Oh, no, I was wrong. <laughs> wow, it is. It is metal. It is actually a separately fitted... Uh, well, it might be copper or it might be just painted mazak or something, but either way, it is genuinely metal. And another thing that is metal is the safety valves here, although I suppose they might be the whistles, or maybe one's a safety valve and one's a whistle, I don't know. Um, oh, that one made me jump. Uh, Beam DD 19 thank you very, very much. Oh, it's his birthday. Everybody, take to the chat and say, and well, and sing happy birthday to, who was it now? Uh, the Beam DD 19 there we go. Everybody wish him happy birthday. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and thank you for wasting or spending some of your day to watch my stream. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, that's great. No glazed windows, though, as you can see on the inside of the loco, but we do have some sort of cab detail, as you can see there. And those with a really steady hand might even be able to paint that if you wanted to, because there's actually quite good access through the back there, which is quite good. 
So uh, let's see, we've got a coal load, as you can see, that's not too bad, is it? There's a little, uh, presumably a brake wheel there. Uh, doesn't look like that's separately fitted or anything, but uh, it's, it looks pretty realistic, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, no NEM couplings with this. Again, they are just a part of the mold, I think. But uh, either way, that isn't too bad. So I like that, that's a nice little loco. We'll get that running very, very shortly. Let's take a look at the Great Western Wagon then. There it is. Ah, oh, this is gonna roll away, isn't it? Right, it's stayed there for, for the time being. I'll have to hold it. So this is quite basic. I've shown these box uh, vans on my channel many, many times, although never a Great Western one. So as you can see, this is number 43. There's a closer look at the underside if you wanted to see that. Those are those couplings, by the way. I uh, didn't get a good shot of those earlier, but uh, I'll just show you if you're interested. Oh, there's some uh, cack on that wheel that's just dropped off. What's that? Ugh. Get that off my fingers. Anyway, let's not get distracted by the cack. So there we go. That's the coupling. I'm sure you've seen those before, but if not, uh, yeah, you can clearly see that that's not quite an M coupling. But it does a similar sort of job. It allows you to remove the coupling and uh, fit a different one if you want to, but I, I think they tend to just be that type, really. You don't get many thin ones, but I have seen them. There we go, there's the broad oak wagon, quite nice. I like the uh, the plank effect that's had the text printed over it, that's quite nice. Inside, very very basic, there's uh, no detail in there, but these wagons date back a really, really long time. <laughs> there's loads of people still in the chat wishing happy birthday, <laughs> that's brilliant. And yes, Kiwi flying, they are made in China, they certainly are. And as you can see, yes, the uh, couplings are just a part of the moulding there, they are truly fixed on. Although if you really wanted to get rid of them, I suppose you could snip there and snip there, take the coupling hook off and then glue on your own coupling. But uh, yeah, for me, it's it's not that bad to be honest. But uh, if you really do hate those couplings, I suppose there's a way around it for you if you're really desperate. So that's that. And then my favorite, here we go. Look at this thing, man. The detail on this, this is incredible. I can't believe that this is being sold as a railroad loco. So let's try and get in close, shall we, with this one. I mean, this is actually more detailed than the loco by a, quite a long way. So look at that, decent paintwork, as you can see. Plenty of underframe detail, which looks really, really good. Uh, you've got uh, lots of moulded detail on the interior, including separately fitted, well, possibly separately fitted. Can I get this in focus? Uh, well, anyway, you can see the controls there. There we are, more or less in focus. Yep, that's not too bad, you can see that. There's a lot of detail on this. Look at that, beautiful toad. And I know there's a lot of people that like toads because of Toad in Thomas and Friends, of course. So these are brilliant things. And then on the underside, let me get this focused again. You can see it's very much the same as the box van uh, with the uh, plastic wheels, which you can exchange, by the way. Shall I take one out and show you? My hand's going to cover the, the shot completely. Um, Oof, that was a bit too much force. But as you can see, you can take those wheels out and then if you get uh, a, a metal wheel set like this, in theory, they should all fit. So if you really wanted to change those for metal wheels, you could do. And it's the same story with the uh, couplings, as you can see. So now I've got the fun job of trying to put these axles back in. Um, it's a little bit easier to take them out than it is to put them back, but uh, there we go, that's gone back in. So hopefully when we give this a try, it's still going to work. If not, we'll be in some doo-doo, I think. But uh, no, that seems to be all right. So yeah, I mean, I'm pleased with this. Um, you know, I, I'm the first one to put my hand up and say I love super detailed models and things. But uh, just this little thing, you know, I, I can mess around with this. You know, if I want to do a shunting video, I can bang this on the track and I can mess around with it and I know it's not going to break. And uh, yeah, it looks the part too, doesn't it? A lovely little Holden 101, not too bad at all. So what do you reckon to that then, folks? Do you like that? I like it, says Adam Rushton, about four times, it looks like. Broad Oak, says Dab on Clickbait. Did, did I not say Broad Oak? Maybe I said it wrong, I'm not absolutely sure. Sam is a great YouTuber, says Sebastian Wilkins. Well, thank you very much. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, Sam, on that little steamer, if you wanted to paint the interior, you can. Oh, you can remove the floor and the whole back bit by lifting slightly and pulling away. They're attached by clips. Right, so the cab. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can remove the coal bunker, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, you could then. You could. And actually, there's quite a lot of... Sep um, not. There's actually quite a lot of uh, moulded, sorry, uh, cab detail inside there, which is really quite good. Uh, didn't really come through on the close-up, but uh, yeah. Ooh. Quite nice. Never really had a close look at that. Uh, but yeah, that's very, very good. It's brilliant, says Toby Cowan. 
How many members do you have? Uh, I think there's 30 odd now, maybe a little over 30. We've had a couple join today, haven't we? But uh, yeah, either way, if you want to become a member, you can do. You get lots of behind the scenes stuff, of course. Uh, great for the price. I would buy it, says Holden Timulty. Well, that's good to hear. I quite like that. Not bad, says AJ Finley Jr. Yeah, I thought that wasn't bad. I thought it might have been bad for 30 odd quid uh, because that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, prices like that. But. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't be put off because that is pretty decent although we haven't tried it yet so maybe it won't work but i'm sure it will we'll have to see military nerd welcome he says hi sam can i have a shout out please yes you can and yes dab on clickbait i did see your message i'll try to get to you if i can uh, neat says lotus 64 for the win i'm using my dad's youtube says sebastian wilkins ah so your name might not be sebastian ah you'll have to let us know if you don't mind putting your name on there by the way don't if you're not sure uh, Piggy Nice 18 says hi, hi to you Toe, too even, and Sammy B Film says it would be great if Hornby made a full size new build of the 101 Loco. A full size, blimey, that would be interesting, I suppose it would fit in some people's gardens I guess. Uh, but yes that's true, a new tooling for the uh, the 101 would be interesting, although of course there was only one in real life, so uh, yeah you're not going to see them on, you know, on every little branch line on the Great Western for example, but yeah it would be cool, it would be cool, they've done unique locos before haven't they? Uh, Hobbybuddy99 says shout out, there we go, and Donny Murray says I have one, oh very nice, well uh, you, you'll be able to tell us how these run then. So on the subject then on how these run, I'm going to go for a little bit of a break, I'm going to set this up with its train, I'm not too sure how I'm going to order the wagons, I might just put them in the order they came out of the box, I think that makes the most sense, and I'm going to set up some requests as well, so I will only be five minutes, if I'm not you can shout at me when I come back, uh, so go and get yourself some refreshments if you want to, it has been a horrible day today, again we've had snow, hail, rain, wind, sun even, crazy day and it was the same last Sunday, so uh, Sundays are crazy, so what I'm saying is it's a horrible winter's day, at least if you're in the UK, so you can spoil yourself with a, a drink or at least a biscuit or something who knows so i'll be five minutes i'll stop rambling about drinks and biscuits and actually get some work done and i'll be back as soon as possible to see how this lot runs uh, so let's try it i'll be back very shortly cheers everybody all right folks i am back i was a bit sp i worked hard that time because i i noticed last week i was gone for about seven minutes and i thought that's a bit unacceptable so we're back and i've set everything up there we go oh you cannot that can't be right uh, you can hardly see the uh, the Great Western freight pack, so we'll have to move this camera a touch. There we go, hopefully you'll be able to see that. So, welcome back anyway, welcome back. I uh, hope you, uh, well, I hope you got yourself some refreshments. So what we've done so far, let's see, well we've unboxed the freight pack of course, we've talked about uh, requests, competitions. Again, by the way, thank you to everybody, uh, thank you very much to everybody who has uh, sent in uh, Super Chats, you were all entered in to win these. And in fact, I think before we go on, I better go through and thank everybody that's donated so far because, uh, yes, I forgot to do that after the break last week. And uh, I like to uh, give people as many shout outs as possible if they're uh, sending in super chats. So let's take a look. So AZ Rail, Gareth Waite, Paul S. Uh, I'm just making sure I haven't missed any of these uh, messages. Uh, the Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus, the Ugly Duckman, Sparky 10707 again, Unikit Cat, Charles Curtis, Jason Biggs, Jake Darling, the Beam DD19, and Message Deleted. I don't know who that was from, but uh, either way, thank you, whoever that was. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. You guys are all entered in to win these prizes, and uh, there's what? three weeks left until we do the draw so there's still plenty of time to enter if you fancy if you fancy that all right so shall we try this then we're going to do the first ever run of this little great western 040 now this has never been tried before and rockstar 0740 says hi sam please shout out says train tracker hi guys says lgl rail yard hi to you too can you do how to clean a class 47 says robert osborne uh, i could try i've not got well i yes i've got a 47 haven't i yeah uh, Isabel D'Amio, what is your favourite railway? Oh, maybe, perhaps the uh, the South Devon Railway, I would probably say, under pressure. Although, uh, I haven't thought properly about that, so I can't say for sure. Right, shall we give it its first ever run then? Now, obviously, this is a bit naughty, because you're supposed to run in the loco before you give it a load. But I'm going to do that today, just because we, we don't have time to wait an hour for this thing to run in. And, of course, it's not a very large load, is it? It's only three wagons, so I'm hoping it will be okay. But for the time being, then, let's give this a little bit of slow speed. See if this is going to work. There we go. <laughs> it's a bit rough, isn't it, at that slow speed? Oh, thank you, whoever that was. Uh, Milo McQuillan. Oh, thank you. Hi, Sam, I just joined. Oh, well, welcome. I hope you enjoy what we do today. Right, so it's cut out, unfortunately. I'll give it a bit of a push. 
course, it is brand new, so it's going to be a bit dodgy to start with, probably. Although I didn't see it stop on the express points. No, it seemed all right on the express points. Right, so now it's gone forwards and backwards a bit. Let's try this again. Just give it a little bit of a warm up, and then we'll try that slow speed again, shall we? Right, turn it up, turn it up. It is only a three pole cam motor in here, by the way, so they are a little bit, uh, they're not the best in the world, but they're not too bad. Let's cut out again. It's a bit nasty doing this without it having warmed up. So that's about as slow as I can get it right now. It might be a bit better later on. In fact, it's a bit better backwards. If I try that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit better backwards, isn't it? Although it does keep stopping. But I'm sure it will improve as it goes. So let's give it about medium speed. You can see it doesn't run too fast, as some of the pocket rockets do. Uh, it's quite nice and controlled, which means it's probably got the new gearing, or the slightly newer gearing anyway. Uh, which keeps them running a bit slower. I know some people are disappointed in that, but uh, I suppose those of us that like a bit of realism prefer it, maybe, and it gives the loco a bit more torque and a bit more power as well, which, which can't be a bad thing. Okay, so on the outside line, as you can see, we have the beautiful Mallard with Pullman coaches, and that was a request from one of my engineers. Who was it from? It was from Adam Rushton, so I hope you like that, Adam. And then, of course, the first of... Oh, oops, it's just <laughs> smacked into one of my uh, Intercity coaches there. Oops. Left it a bit too close to the track, I guess. Oh well, try again. Sorry, Mallard. I'll uh, I'll check that you're all right later. Anyway, then we we are getting on to the first of today's requests, which was for the Barclays and the P Class. So thank you very much for that one, and uh, some food and drink wagons, of course. So here they are. Let's see here. What have we got? So we have fish fingers, peanuts, more fish fingers, crisp snacks and nuts, crisp snacks and nuts, beef eater. That'll be uh, my pick I think big chips and then at the back a brake van uh, you can't eat the brake van but uh, I guess that's uh, acceptable isn't it so there we go let's have a quick run with these then uh, can you do the flying Scotsman Jedi game in 158 yeah if somebody requests the flying Scotsman I could certainly show that um, so let's have a look oh uh, look at that no engines in shot at all how typical so I suppose since we are um, doing the first ever run of the Great Western Train Pack, we ought to follow that one around a little bit, didn't we? So let's follow that as it goes, shall we? There it is. And it seems to be running fine once it gets up to a sort of medium sort of speed. That seems to be absolutely fine. Ah, and there's Mallard. Looks absolutely lovely, by the way, with the, uh, with the Pullman's Adam. So that was a solid idea, very, very solid idea. Okay, so the Great Western Train Pack should be coming around the back of the bookcase. There we go, there it is. And there's the P-Class and the Barclays. Who asked for that now? I don't think I mentioned the name, did I? It was Gareth Waite, I think it was. Um, or was it? Perhaps it wasn't. Let's double check. Let me put this uh, split screen back on just so that you can still see. Uh, you need to get these things right, of course. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was. Yes, it was. It was. I was right first time. I should have shut up, shouldn't I? <laughs> but there we go. As you can see, it is working very nicely. And what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of a uh, another slow speed test, shall we, in a second or two, just to see things have improved at all. But uh, hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. Bye, Sam, says 07, uh, Rockstar0740. Well, bye to you too. Hope you have a good time. Uh, Fujiwara Tuj says, can you run an elect electric locomotive? Yes, it's been a long while since I've done that. Again, if someone wants to request one, I can certainly do that. Clunk74, yes, you can have a shout out, please. You certainly can. And seat, what does Gallium Gamer mean by seat? Well, there you go, seat. Uh, can you do USA locomotives, Raphael? Yes, I do have plans to do some American locos pretty soon. Where's all these engines? They've all disappeared. Ah, we've got one coming here. Ah, there we go. So yes, I will try and do that pretty soon. Link for the set. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find a link for this set. They all seem to have sold out for the time being. Uh, do look it up. I uh, quoted the product number earlier. In fact, so let's put this back onto the split screen. I'll uh, find the box. So what you need to search up is R3489. It's the railroad GWR freight train pack. And uh, hopefully if you put that up, if some retailers do still have them in stock, you ought to be able to find them by looking that up. I like trains, says Scottish Train Spotter. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You're, in, you're definitely in the right place. And uh, yes, Angela, uh, sorry, I will be doing some American Locos soon. Yes, I've got uh, quite a few now, some that I've not shown. Uh, so I've shown pictures of some of them to Andrew Keeley, my friend from Amer America, just to uh, see what he thinks. But uh, for the most part, I haven't shown them yet, so... Yes, there's some exciting American locos still to come. Some that aren't very good too, by the way. I've got at least one, <laughs> one Backman one that is absolutely awful. But uh, you'll see that, you'll see that soon enough. <laughs> 
Least favourite locomotive, says Infinity Woomy. It's probably that. I'm not going to show it in the stream, but uh, yeah, it is bad. I've, uh, I've already unboxed it and filmed it. Man, it's bad. But uh, quite interesting. But, um, so I'm hoping people will enjoy seeing that. Right, let's bring these to a stop then. In fact, I haven't talked about the ratings and rankings yet, so I better do that, hadn't I? Oh, we can't stop them before I've done that. Right, shall we have a quick look then? So here are my ratings. Let's bring those up. Uh, nope, not there. <laughs> so there we go, so detail then, 3 star. So of course this is a railroad model, it's supposed to be quite basic in terms of detail, and it is indeed, although I must say there are some nice elements of uh, the detail, such as the metal chimney and the metal safety valves and things, but apart from that, yeah, it is mostly plastic, including the running board, and in fact the chassis as well. Performance then, 3 star, as you can see, it does obviously haul three wagons okay. I'm not absolutely sure how many more it would haul because it is quite light, as I say, there's not much metal on this. And also the slow speed is a little bit non-existent with this. I'm not absolutely sure why, it might be to do with the, uh, the three-pole motor, I, I guess. I'm not 100% sure though. The mechanism is quite basic as well, there's no bearings on the wheel set, it is just a plastic chassis which is very very basic. It's quite difficult to strip down, especially if you want to get access to the uh, the pickups, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not terrible I suppose. And again, yeah, three pole motor, so the mechanism is very basic, however they are good and reliable, and as we've seen through the endurance test, the Hornby 040s can run for hundreds and hundreds of miles and still be absolutely fine, so I think um, reliability if that was one of these uh, categories, I think it would do very well for that. And certainly the quality, I've given it a four star, even though there is a lot of plastic construction on this, the quality is pretty decent, so I've given that four star. And of course, for £29, that is crazy value. I can't believe the value for that, so I've given that five stars for sure. I'm not absolutely sure what the RRP was, but it, I, I think it's quite a bit more than £29, I think. So overall then, for a railroad model that is very cheap, 7.03 out of 10 certainly isn't too bad. And into the rankings it goes, I've already spoiled this slightly, but there we go, it is 10th just above the star class and below the USA tank. So overall, yeah, that's not too bad, is it? Quite pleased, I think, for the, at least for the money, you know, a lot of the locos that I review get lower scores than that, and they cost sometimes four or five times as much. So I don't think we can complain too much there, can we? And of course, let me know right now in the chat what you would have rated this out of 10. Just splurge a number straight into the keypad and I'll come and take a look and see what people are saying. I'm hoping I'm going to see 7 out of 10 all the time, <laughs> but uh, we don't know. Let's try this slow speed again. Come on, don't stop. There we go, it's going. There we go, that's crawling a little bit better now, isn't it? He says, and it stopped immediately, come on. So yeah, uh, it doesn't really like doing slow speeds, does it? That's definitely true. But uh, at, a, at a sort of basic speed, I think it does the job, doesn't it, for, uh, for a budget model. And certainly if you bung it on your train set, that's going to work just fine. So yeah, they're not the best performers in the world, but uh, for the money, they're certainly not too bad. And of course, they've only got four pickups on them, so they're pretty basic. Right, Gareth Waite says eight. Uh, Defiant Shackleton says eight. I like transport was very generous. He says nine. Yo, own Gunston, 7.5. Ronan's Railway, 7.5. Alexander Smith was a bit more harsh. He gave it a six. Uh, Toby Crawn, six. Uh, so there's a few sixes. There's a few people being very harsh. A few people being quite generous. Harry Underhill says 5.5 out of 10. Blimey, Harry. You obviously don't like this thing. 6 out of 10, Uni Kit Kat. 0 out of 10, Liam Jackson. Now, that sounds vindictive. Have you got one of these? And has it broken down? Because that sounds very, very low. I'd love to know why you give it a 0. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. I suppose the average is about 7, then. There's quite a lot of... 7.8s and 9s, but there's also quite a few 6s and 5s and things. Adam Ruston, there we go, 9 out of 10. That's not bad, that ain't bad. Um, well, in fact, that's very good. Kellogg's Kell, 8 out of 10. Gene, Lam, 7.48 out of 10. That is a very, very specific score. I would love to know how you came up with that. Or is that what I gave it? No, I gave it 7.03. Okay, so no idea where that came from. Okay, very cool. So, 69 out of 10, says Mark. Well, I might have known, Mark. I might have known. Okay, so there we go. That's the review. Let's have one last look at it. There we go. You can't help but love it. Well, those that give it sort of 5 and 6 out of 10 obviously don't. But for me, uh, I can't help but love that thing. When you think how little it cost. And don't forget, I, you know, if you buy the Hornby Railroad 14XX, for example, that costs that. And yet here we are with four, three wagons and a loco. So that's pretty good. I really do like that. Okay. Mm. 
Let's move on then. I've got some Wall of Fame stuff to show. And by the way, if you want a picture to go up on the Wall of Fame, as you can see just behind me, um, you can send it to my email address, which is samstrains at outlook.com. But it's in the description if you want anyway. So thank you to everybody who sent one in this week. Uh, keep them coming, by the way, and uh, you get a little shout out on stream. You can send anything you like, as long as it's clean, obviously. Uh, so you can send drawings, pictures of your layouts, pictures of your engines, anything like that at all. Be creative and we will see what happens. <laughs> Creepy laugh. Jacob Wilson, thank you very much for frightening me again. And I hate that picture. I'll have to do something about that, won't I? It ain't Halloween anymore. Okay, so Daniel C., look at this. We have a very old-fashioned uh, loco here. I forget what this one is now. Let me know in the chat if you know. I did know, but uh, yeah, it's a very old uh, 040. Uh, and then we have Miles, the 040, which is next to it. Look at the size difference. Now, Miles isn't a huge engine, but uh, yes, there we go. So yeah, Daniel said he was very pleased to have his own Miles now. And uh, I'm glad he is too. I think he's in the USA, so it's quite cool to see some of those... Uh, Hornby engines over there, that's very cool. Uh, now this is crazy, look at this. Now Andy sent me this. In fact, this one is so crazy, I'm gonna try and get this up on the close-up camera. Now look at the state of that. He said this was in the Marklin Visitor Center or the Marklin Museum or something like that. Now he didn't explain what had happened with this, so if anybody knows, do let me know. But it looks like a tin plated loco but it looks as though it's completely melted, as though, it, as though it's made of thin plastic. So there's some s serious craziness going on there. I'm not absolutely sure what that is. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for that, Andy. And uh, that is certainly very, very interesting. And again, why they've got that on display in this museum slash visitor center, I don't know. But I think it's safe to say that that won't work anymore. Or maybe it will. <laughs> the uh, valve gear, look at that valve gear though. Or the uh, pistons, I should say looks a little messed up to say the very least um, yeah it does it looks like it's melted but uh, I don't know how you'd melt a tin plated loco we're talking quite high temperature for that <laughs> yes perhaps it did Joran Scholten maybe it did get too hot obviously that's what we call a burnout so yeah I thought that was interesting so thank you for that Andy that is crazy and that will definitely go on the wall I tried to print off a few different sizes because I don't know if you can see but we've got some square gaps so I've been uh, trying to uh, print off some square pictures. So if you've got any square photos that I can print off as a square and put on the wall, uh, send those to me because uh, we can fill up some of the gaps with those. I don't know what I like. It doesn't really matter. You send in what you like. Ethan, Spitfire, definitely one of my favourites. We've got the Battle of Britain there. Uh, can't have too many of those. If, if every picture on the Wall of Fame was a Battle of Britain, I think I'd be very happy. So thank you for that, Ethan. Let's show it again because I only showed it for a second. Spitfire. Southern Green, of course. Absolutely love it. So thank you for that, Ethan. That's awesome. Uh, ZPlays137. Here we go. Oh, there is a drawn one. I said there wasn't any in the chat earlier, but we do have one that's been drawn. And since I've got the close-up cam, we can try and get this in. There we go. Zindren, number 137, LBSC. Now, I've not heard of that, but if it's LBSC, that should be quite British. Number 137. I love the crew, by the way. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. So thank you very much, Z please one three seven. Thank you for that. It's a four four zero. No, never seen that before. So is that fictional or is that thing a real loco? Somebody look it up. It's the LBSC one three seven. Looks a little bit like. Uh, Edward, I guess, but uh, I don't think Edward was from the LBSC, was he? And then we have Stephen W who sent in this, uh, which I think is the something. <laughs> what is that now? It looks like a uh, ooh. I'm not absolutely sure. I was going to say a crab, but it, it looks kind of like a crab, but I don't think it is because it hasn't got a tender. It's from the Keith Lee and Worth Valley Railway anyway. I think he did tell me what this is, but I've forgotten now. Either way, it looks very interesting. It looks, it might even be a Fowler. It looks like one of the Fowler tank engines, but I didn't think any of those have been preserved. Either way, whatever it is, whatever it is, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And uh, thank you for sending me a picture of that, Stephen, and I will definitely get that up on the wall. And also, I have been collecting a few bits and pieces from the PO box, so if you want to send in a drawing or a letter actually in the flesh uh, we do have the PO box uh, and uh, I can actually point to it today there we go uh, so yeah I will during one of these streams I will show um, what people have sent into the PO box so if you want to do that uh, get that sent over over the next couple of weeks or so and uh, I will show your drawings or letters and things in the stream so there we go uh, so do that if you fancy it and uh, I'll be sure to give you a big shout out of course okay so let's see let's go back to the chat if anybody wants a shout out do let me know if anybody's got any questions for me um, ask them they can be about anything not necessarily train related if you must I don't mind 
and then we'll get on to some more of these requests, shall we? Liam Jackson, Edward is indeed from the Furness Railway. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah, I thought I had a feeling it wasn't the LBSC. <laughs> I saw this set on Hornby's USA website, but unfortunately I was unable to get it before they sold out, right? Well, these, these do seem to sell out then. But like I say, there are other Hornby Railroad train packs. I think uh, Hatton's have got that crane one, haven't they, with the railroad crane? I've got one over there um, for stupid money, really, really crazy. I think less than 20 quid, I think it is. Uh, quite a bit less, in fact. It's, it's mad. I can't remember exactly, but uh, look it up if you fancy that. Loving the stream, says Toby. Thank you very much, Toby Cowan. Thank you for that. Um... LGL, LGL Rail Yard, <laughs> don't know why that L came out so weird. Uh, can you give me a shout out? Oh, it's disappeared. And have you checked my YouTube channel? No, but I certainly can do. Thank you for that. HobbyBuddy99 says, it hurts. Well, I don't know what hurts, but I hope it doesn't hurt too much. Uh, into drawing, says Mangle. Okay, well, you can send a drawing if you fancy it. Uh, when do you do streams, says Toby? Well, right now and uh, every Sunday at uh, five o'clock, at least for the next few weeks anyway. Uh, do a shout out for me, says Jack Hotchart. Well, there you go. HW Studio says, hi. Uh, Holden Timulty says, can you do an HST video? Have I not got an HST video? Yeah, I, I'm sure I do. Yeah, it was the Hornby, um, yeah, the Hornby slash, 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 slash. I promise it is uh, not alcohol in that cup, but I seem to not be able to talk every time I have a drink. It's the Hornby slash Virgin livery version, and I'm sure I've done a review of that. Uh, please correct me, though, if I'm wrong, and I will review that if not. Please read this. I saw the Hornby star class in the ratings, says Adam Rushton. Did you? I must have uh, forgotten to hide that then. Obviously, I do film a little bit in advance, so uh, just try and forget that you saw that. I tried to take out the ones that haven't been released yet, but, uh, of course, this week I did the Model Railway News and um, the Terrier video, which uh, weren't planned, obviously, there, last-minute things. Uh, so let me know. Let me know what you thought about the Terrier, by the way. Anybody got one yet? Because I'd be really interested to know whether everybody's Terrier is a little bit on the dodgy side in terms of quality, or whether it's just mine. Uh, let me know. Uh, Gene Larm, shout out, please. There you go. Modi, shout, can you shout out me? Yes, I can. There you go. What's your favourite manufacturer? Ooh, that's difficult. Well, I can give you my top three, and I can't say the order, really. Uh, so Hornby, definitely. I think Hatton's as well, because, uh, well, they've not done many models yet, but everything they've done so far I've absolutely loved, and the Class 66 looks to be no different. So definitely Hatton's, and I think the same goes for Oxford Rail. I would probably put Oxford Rail in there now. I wouldn't have done six months ago, but since that N7, I think the, uh, the Oxford Rail has to get in there, because they are so inexpensive, and the models are really, really good. Again, though, they've not done a huge amount, but they're starting to get good, let's say that. So I think... Uh, uh, the, the Oxford Rail is one to watch for sure. Scottish Train Spotter, shout out. Alexander Smith, shout out, please. What is the slowest loco magnum? Mm, oh, I've got it. I think it's probably this. Without checking the whole collection over, I think it's probably that. The Backman 08 Shunter, those are real slow. Very, very slow. Even if you put them at whole, uh, full speed, they still go real slow. Uh, so, yeah. A lot of talk behind those. Okay, so I'm going to clear off some of these engines from the sidings. Well, not the sidings, from the actual track. So I'm going to find out what is next on the um, requests agenda. So let me just uh, sort that. Right, let's get these loaded up and have a look. So it was Gareth Waite was the last one, wasn't it? So let's have a look. Uh, yes, it was. It was Gareth Waite. And thank you for that, Gareth Waite. So it was Paul, two Q1s. Hey, this is nice. I do like two Q1s. I've only done that once before, I think, with the new Southern Coaches. I'll just put new SR. I think I'll know what I mean. Uh, let's see the duck, Ugly Duck Man. I'll just put Ugly. I think I'll know who I mean. No offence, of course. Uh, the Golden Valley 060. So I'll just put GV. Uh, four Wheel Coaches. And a couple of Vans. Hey, we could keep that Great Western Van on, can't we? Because it is a Great Western Loco. And let's have another look. Let's have another look. Jake Darling. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Jake Darling. I'll just put Jake because he, he gets these Blackadder jokes, you know, all the time because his name's Darling. So uh, we'll leave off that, even though I've kind of mentioned it. So maybe that can't, can't counts as making the joke. Okay, so it was the Hall class. I'll just put Hall uh, and some Great Western. And I hope you like your Hall class, by the way, Jake. I certainly love mine. Right, let's go and deal with this lot then. Let's put these on. So, we can leave a few of the vans, including that Great Western one, <laughs> and uh, perhaps one of the, uh, the Smiths ones or something like that, just because uh, we've got a request now for a couple of other vans. But uh, we'll move the rest of it out of the way, 
So we'll do the van request on the middle line since all that that great western van seems to roll quite freely. Oh, it's gone. It's left the shot. <laughs> Look at this. Crikey, it's going up Gordon's Hill. Wow. Well, that was that's impressive. So that's that's one thing to bear in mind. I do complain about plastic wheels a lot, don't I? But actually, when they're new, at least I don't know how it will be later on. But when they're new, they seem to they seem to roll really, really well. That's great. And of course, I've not oiled it or anything. That is literally how it came straight out the box. So I'm impressed with that. That's pretty good. I noticed that the toad wasn't quite as free. Uh, the wheels are actually quite difficult to turn on the toad. And I noticed that before I tore one out, by the way. So it isn't just because I've, I've torn them out. Right, did anybody ask for Pullman coaches? I don't think they did, did they? No, I should have remembered that really, but uh, no. So I can take these off, at least for now. There might be some more Pullman requests coming up later, but uh, yeah, we'll take those off for the time being. And the two little tank engines. And I love that idea, by the way. Gareth, I do love those little tank engines. Uh, so, uh, yeah, pleased to be running those again. Uh, so, what do you reckon? Shall we just keep the Smiths fans? Yeah, and we'll take the rest off then. So, I'll tell you what, well, no. I was going to say we'll put a brake van on, but uh, that wasn't a part of the request, so I will not get creative and do that. I'm sure he wouldn't have minded, but I'm not going to do that. Right, so, first of all then, let's go on a bit of a Q1 hunt, shall we? Let's see if I can't find two Q1s, because I need two, not just one. So, right, I need to go over to my 060 shelf, because I have got, would you believe, an 060 shelf now. So, let's see. Yeah, I've got them here. <laughs> but the thing is, I haven't always had an 060 shelf. I've uh, basically, one of the surfaces over where I keep the coaches, if you can picture where I mean, uh, I've converted that to loco storage, because I've had to do it. But the thing is... Normally, I keep all my engines at the other end of the room. So when I'm looking for an 060, the number of times I end up thinking, oh, no, it's gone, where is it? And then I remember, ah, yes, I've got an 060 tent the shelf. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's crazy, but uh, it does happen all the time. Right, slight dilemma here, folks, because I have not got a front coupling on one of these Q1s. So let's put that one down there and see if I can pinch one from somewhere. I've got a bag of couplings, I think. Uh, if I can't find one very, very quickly, I might just nick it off another engine, and I think that might be the best thing. Right, now, I'm on the hunt now. I'm getting a screwdriver, <laughs> and I'm going to search for an engine that has got a front coupling that I can steal. Which one of you is going to lose your front coupling? Which one, which one? Right, I'm going to try the Backman E4. There we go. Stolen it from the Backman E4. There we go. So please, don't anybody ask for me to double head <laughs> the Backman E4 because I might not be able to do it. Right, so these are awkward because the... Uh, actually, look at that. Yeah, the, the NEM coupling is... The NEM pocket, sorry, is so far back on those. I'm going to struggle to get that fitted. Right, well, we'll try it. I reckon we're going to see some derailments with this, though. But we'll try it. I perhaps ought to have picked a Hornby one to steal the coupling from because those are a bit longer normally. Tell you what, it's not fitting. <sighs> right, let's have another look, see if I've got another Q1 somewhere that I can try this on. I'm sorry about this, folks. Slight technical delay here. Uh, oh, oh, right, I've got it on one of my Q1s, <laughs> sort of. Right, right, we'll try this. I must have done it, though, mustn't I? Because I've, I've double-headed a Q1 before. So I don't know why I'm struggling now. Let's see if they'll couple. Right, they seem to have sort of coupled. Uh, so the only problem is I've, I haven't got the tender for that one now. So bear with me. I will go and find that. And uh, yeah, if they derail, I would, I would say normally that it's bad news. But people actually seem to love it when stuff goes wrong. So <laughs> I won't hope it doesn't derail. But uh, it would be easier if it didn't, shall we say. So here we go then. Are you ready? tender for the Q1 and there we are the double header is complete I do love double headed Q1s are they both working yes look at that right so the request was to have my new southern coaches on the back there so I will find those and I tell you what I've already been doing some filming with the uh, southern coaches uh, quite a lot in fact uh, so you know about one of them the uh, terrier of course, which I just put out yesterday. And if you haven't seen that review, by the way, feel free to check it out. It is a very interesting model, and I think you'd enjoy it. 
Uh, so yeah, these ran in that video, and there was another video that I filmed, but I haven't put out yet. And uh, these coaches appeared in that as well, so I'm certainly getting my money's worth <laughs> in the first week that I've owned them. So uh, yeah, so far, it was definitely worth the uh, £15.50 odd that I spent on these. Can't be bad, can it, that? Really can't be. Oops, although I've not put that one on properly. Might derail them and uh, damage them if I'm not careful. Okay, so there we are. There's the new uh, Southern Coaches. Hopefully they will look lovely with those Q1s. For the first time ever, Q1s hauling proper Southern Coaches. There we go, that's crazy. Ah, right, normally I would sit back and enjoy the view for a little while, but uh, we've got to crack on. So we need the Golden Valley Hobbies uh, Barclay 060 tank engine, which I can't quite seem to spot right now. Where's that gone? Must be over on my other shelf. You see, that one's not an 060 uh, tender engine, that's an 060 tank, so that fits on my uh, regular 060 shelf, um, or my tank engine shelf, in fact. Although I can't spot it. That's, maybe it was over here. <laughs> oh, yes, it was, it was. That's the problem, you see, all my shelves are getting far too full, so I'm having to spill over into other places. But there we go, that's on the track now. We need a couple of the four-wheeled wagons. It's only a small engine, so we'll just put two on just so that she doesn't get stuck on Gordon's Hill, because uh, we had a bit too much of that last week, didn't we? So, <laughs> better if we can avoid that today. And then what was it on the inside line? Let's have a quick look. Uh, so, oh yes, Jake wanted to see the railroad hall class, and I think it's obvious which one I've got to choose, isn't it? We're gonna have to go with uh, the one I just reviewed. Where are you, Mr. Hall class? Here it is, Adderley Hall, in my favorite Great Western livery. Well, in fact, the Great Western livery, early Great Western. There we go. Try not to knock off the Barclay train while I do it. <laughs> there we go. And some Great Western coaches. Have I got some out already? No. Right. Well, I'm sorry, folks. This is uh, taking a bit longer than expected, isn't it? But hopefully it'll be worth it. I think these are going to be good ones. So let's go with four coaches, shall we? <laughs> I think it was somebody last week. I don't know if they're here now. Uh, was commenting, <laughs> saying on all of his live streams, he tends to put on four coaches. <laughs> and that's true, I do tend to pick four coaches for the live streams. But there is sort of method in the madness there, because obviously three coaches looks a bit tight. Um, so, you know, I think it, it doesn't look great with three coaches. I think four is about the minimum you can put on, and it still look reasonably decent. Because obviously these live streams, uh, I've got to do things quite quickly. And if I start dealing with five or six coaches, or maybe even seven or eight, in one go on one train, it takes a long time to put them on, it takes a long time to get them back off again, and you know people end up waiting. So four coaches is about a good number. You know It doesn't take too long. I can carry four coaches in one go, for example, and uh, you can just get them off the track and stash them out of shot, or slightly in shot, as these uh, intercity ones are, and they're not too in the way. So. That's the reason I'm not just boring, and for normal videos, of course, I can run more than four coaches, and I normally do. Although, of course, with these southern coaches, I've only got four of those, so it has to be four with those. But there we go. Thank you for those, folks. Those are very, very awesome. So, let's have a quick look, shall we? We better have a quick look, because it took long enough, didn't it, to put these on? <laughs> right, let's have a look. Have we missed it? No, 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 we haven't. So, there go the Q1s. The whole class train has disappeared well into the distance already. In fact... It's already behind the bookcase. <laughs> but uh, no, not the Q1 train. The Q1 train, as per usual, is going nice and slow. Look at that. It doesn't get a lot better than that, really, does it? Not really. Oh, I think we've missed that one, but we've got the Great Western just going by there, which is very nice. And it shouldn't be long until we get the Q1s underneath the bookcase. Are they coming? Yes, there they are. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I love that. These are great. And of course, it's lovely to see the uh, the Barclay as well, Jake, so thank you for that. Um, the uh, Barclay 060, by the way, it's not the Barclay 040, if you're looking at that and you're not sure what it is. Um, Golden Valley Hobbies uh, produced, who was it produced by? Electrotren, I think it was. Electrotren, if I'm saying that right. Probably not, knowing me. Ah, there we go. That back Q1 is weathered, by the way, so that shows you really uh, the difference between the weathered and unweathered versions. Very nice. Yes, those are very good. So thank you for those requests, folks. I do love doing these. 
And uh, most of these requests feature southern engines, don't they, I've noticed. So I don't know whether that's just people being super generous to me or not. Because <laughs> people perhaps know that I, I love the southern stuff. But uh, yes, if you're a southern fan, or I suppose a great western fan today, you certainly won't be disappointed. Or I, I guess I hope not. So let's bring these to a stop there. There we go, the Q1s. Now I thought this weathered BR Black Q1 had a bit of motor trouble. Uh, I've noticed that it was a bit dodgy over the last few times I've run it. But I can't say that today. It seems to have run just fine and this loco didn't look as though it was dragging it along, did it? So overall I think that's quite uh, quite a good result. And uh, of course Adelie Hall, no problems with her yet. She's still quite new. In fact this might only be the second video that she's appeared in, might it? Because I didn't review her all that long ago. Ah. Uh, can't really stroke model trains, can you? That's one thing. You tend to just get the whistles and things caught in your fingers and you pull handrails off. But if you could, I'm sure you would. There we go. And the Barclay, that's a bit of a, a bugger for cutting out on points, that one is. I can probably demonstrate. <laughs> Perfect. Although I guess the express points, that's perhaps a bit unfair, isn't it? But uh, yeah, she does tend to cut out on points a little bit. And she has been serviced and I have looked at the uh, pickups and things. And uh, yeah, that seems to be a definite issue. So there we go then. I hope you enjoyed some of that. Uh, yeah, good requests. I think there might have been one or two more requests, but what next week I might do is actually have a request session. So get thinking and uh, get requesting for next time. And uh, we'll try and get some, uh, try and get loads of requests done. So there we go. I think that's more or less it. Uh, Hobbybuddy99 says leaving. Yeah, well, I'll be going in just a second. I think that's more or less it. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling fine. Thanks, Rudden, uh, Adam, Rushton. How are you? Hope you're good. And I hope you liked seeing your request earlier, by the way. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Q1 double header, says Kale's Room. Yes, the Q1 double header. Can't do much better than that, can you? Um, not many locos look as good double headed as that does. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that. Daylight, says Angela. Yes, well, there you go. You can request daylight next week if you want to. Right, Harry Todd Hunter. Sam, can you shout, I'm Pickle Rick? Well, I ain't going to shout it, but I said it. So hopefully that's uh, halfway for you. All right, John Crawford, that was cool. Thank you very much. Ho, says HW Studio. Well, thank you. Not Christmas right now, but I guess we'll save that. Jennifer and Jason Brunel says, hi. Uh, Sam can have a shout out, says Steam Fanatic. Yes, you can. Uh, I'm back, Sam, says uh, Mass the Gamer 74, or Math, Mass, the, I don't know. Mass the Gamer, yes. Uh, well, welcome back either way. I won't mess around trying to say your name. Are you going to Alexandra Palace, says Michael. Um, no, I hadn't planned to. It's a bit far for me, really. But, of course, anybody that is going to the London Festival of Railway Modelling, hope you have an amazing time. That's next Saturday, I think it is. Uh, so, yeah, let us know in the chat if anybody else is going. Uh, E4 doubleheader, dab on clickbait. That would be fantastic. Unfortunately, though, I haven't got uh, two E4s, so I can't do that. But that, I, I don't deny that would look awesome. Uh, can you give a shout out to the volunteers at Ribble Steam Railway, says Ned's Trains. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we do love those uh, volunteers, don't we? Keep these heritage railways alive. You can't beat that, can you? Uh, do you go train spotting, Steve Etheridge? No, I never have. I've been to, model, um, not model railways, I've been to heritage railways and seen trains, obviously. But uh, no, I can't say I've ever actually done spotting. Um, never tried it, so I can't say whether I'd like it or not. Probably would, though. Uh, I'm going to do a video and interview with people, says Amory Junction. Oh, that sounds good. Well, good luck. Hope that goes well for you. Uh, so, yes, thank you to everybody who's enjoyed this. Oh, Scottish Train Spotter, thank you very much. Glad you liked it. Jacob L, hi Sam. I don't think I've seen you today, so uh, glad I give you a little shout out there. So, I better give a quick thank you to everybody that's donated so far via Super Chat. Uh, and once again, a massive thank you to all these folks. Um, it might only seem a little. Uh, but it really does mean that I can continue to do this for a living, which uh, I'm massively grateful for. So thank you so much for that. Right, let's go through the major list then. So here we go. AZ Rail, afternoon all. Hope it's a good stream. I don't know if I read that earlier, but there we go. I've read it now. Gareth Waite, Paul S, the Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus, the Ugly Duck Man, Sparky 107, 107, Uni Kit Kat, Charles Curtis, Jason Biggs, Jake Darling. Hello, darling. Uh, the Beam DD 19 Message deleted again. Again, I'm sorry if I... Uh, I think I did catch you before you deleted your message, so hopefully you got your shout out. Uh, Milo McQuillan and Jacob Wilson. So thank you all very, very much. Of course, you are entered for the uh, different competitions and things, so I hope you enjoy 
Um, the prize draw, when that eventually comes along, uh, there's quite a few people entered, but of course, way less than the National Lottery. So you've got a pretty good chance of uh, winning, I reckon. Anyway, folks, I do hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place for another live stream, uh, doing some requests, showing some uh, snups maybe. I've also started an Instagram page. I'm going to put out a little video tomorrow, I think, just to advertise that a little bit. But if you want to follow me on Instagram, it is Sam's Trains Official on there. And if you want to start tagging me in pictures of your engines, or your railway and that sort of thing next week in the stream i am going to be showing some of those so if you want to get started on that super early before i make the official announcement uh, you can do that if you fancy it but yeah loads of people have asked me to, to uh, start an instagram account so i thought i would do and uh, yeah it seems quite good so i might uh, give that a try but for now folks thank you all very very much for watching adam rushton bye um i hope you all have a lovely night gene uh, bye bye to you as well I'm following you, says MDH Games. Well, that was quick. Oh, yes, I remember you said that before. Piggy Nice 18, bye to you too. Uh, Toby Cowan says thanks. Uh, bye, Sam, Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus. Bye, Sheena Wells. Um, Adam Rushton, again, is just saying bye, bye, bye constantly. So bye, bye, Adam. Thank you very much for joining. And you finally got your request tonight, by the way. And uh, by the way, any other engineers that haven't had their request yet, uh, check back on the community tab and you should be able to leave a comment uh, on a certain post. Uh, which you can use to submit your requests, and I will do that as the weeks go on. Uh, the Ben and Chloe channel, bye. Amory Junction, bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Alexander Smith. And uh, once again, to everybody that's watched, or to everybody who watches on Catch Up Later, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for the support, and I will see you next week. So have a fantastic week. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Let's, uh, well, where is it? I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, well, we'll have uh, an ooh. There we go just because we like cheap train packs, don't we? So there we go, it had to be done. I've gone a whole stream without using it, just to break that rule at the end. Okay, folks, well, thank you once again. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you very, very soon. All right, cheers, everybody. Hey, folks, thank you very much for tuning into today's stream. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I'll be back next Sunday for another episode of Sam's Trains Live at 5 o'clock, so please feel free to join me there if you want to. For now, though, folks, have a great week. I'll see you throughout the week with some more videos, and you will take care of yourselves. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody.